Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome to my page. Welcome to your reading. This is your pick a card reading. So right after I finish speaking, there's going to be a picture that pops up. It's the three piles to choose from. Go ahead and pause the video, choose your pile, and then I'm going to get into the explanations. Okay, so if you picked the left hand, left for you pile, <clears throat> so pile number one, you get sea turtle, nurturer of shells, and the oum pine. This is pretty cool. So nurture of shells, this deck, so this is the queen of cups. So this is that intuitive, empathetic. The queen of cups is the high priestess of the minor arcana. So we really get this strong energy of intuition and receptivity. The queen of cups is the queen of the water element. So this is emotions, relationships, and intuition. Pine is an oam of cleansing, of emotion, of feeling and inspiration. I actually get this sense that pine is going to be helping you see things clearly, but not necessarily in this like cold, objective way. I think that you're going to get a lot of like clarity and therefore cleansing about your emotional world, which is actually really going to support you. Because if we ignore our emotions, then things are just going to go sideways, right? They don't need to be our boss, but to pretend like they're not there is, is actually irrational, right? Like humans are emotional creatures, like we're not robots. So emotions drive even logical things we do like money or career so it's it's not un it's not illogical to pay attention to your emotional world it's actually i think logical so that's really what's going to be upcoming for you at this time i also get a very creative energy water is also creative we often associate wands with creativity in the tarot but water is absolutely there as well so in the nurturer of shells and the queen of cups. This is a really beautiful time to express your feelings out into the world in a really beautiful and creative way. And that really comes back to pine too, with this energy of kind of inspiration and a lot of deep feeling. Generally, like I do get the sense with this deep feeling, it's generally a, a movement. I get the sense that you'll be very moved this week in terms of like beauty and art and poetry. So if there's anything, you know, like writing, film, stories. So if there's something you wish to share <clears throat> or ex excuse me or experience in the realm of beauty and art, this is a fabulous week to do so because you're it's just all here that inspiration, that juice to move. You know, if you're a creative person, you know sometimes if you feel like the the well is dry, it's hard to get moving on those creative endeavors and projects. And uh, but this week this looks like that's really coming up for you. So you know, there might be times where you feel moved and there's like tears, you know, but that's, it's not that there's no beauty in that. So I get the sense this week, there's a lot of heart opening feelings. There's a lot of love. So, you know, if you are thinking about things like relationships, this is actually a good week to be really, really opening up your heart to like the beauty of the human connection and experience. And of course, like the human experience is so many different things. That doesn't mean that there won't be things that move you to tears. This can still be moved to tears through beauty. So it's an emotional week, but it does feel you're the nurturer of the shells, right? So we're not in the five of cups where you're feeling like regretful or mourning. We're not in the four of cups where you feel dissatisfied. We are the queen of cups. We are the nurturer. So this is a place of empowerment and of feeling and examination. So great week. I don't necessarily get... Uh, the energy of like dating, but it is a really great week for clarity when it comes to your feelings, when it comes to romantic relationships or any relationships. So if there's anything that's been like smushered down, this is going to be when we're opening up and feeling. So, you know, if you let yourself feel lonely, if you let yourself feel like I am just a loving person and I'm here to express it and share it and feel it and give it and receive it, you know, I, I actually get a more like upward lift of this reading. So, you know, if it's let yourself be lonely, that's not to say that's not an option, but it's just, I actually get the sense it's more moved by beauty and love this week. So that's your guidance. It's really nurture your creativity and your passion and your feelings and let yourself cry at the things that move you. Notice what moves you. These are signposts of what you could be doing to bring a more beauty and love into the world. Okay, and for my pe uh, friends who picked the middle pile, so pile two, you get Coyote, the trickster, so the fool, and then you get the Owen um, Rowan. Owen Rowan. That was like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
bit of a tongue twister. So this is cool because like Rowan is a sign of protection, of needing protection, but also being very protected. So it's not like danger, danger. It's just like, oh, just you're going to want to be mindful how you move forward. But there's a lot of things set up in place for you that are going to help you be really protected, which is a really cool energy mixing with the fool because the fool has a tendency to throw caution to the winds and often is a part of the medicine of this card. Like just go for it. Leap of faith, right? So together, I think you're being asked to take a calculated risk or a calculated leap of faith. So the fool is really, it's going our own way. And the fool can be like the wise fool. It's not like someone who's, we're not like in the tarot, oh, the fool is so stupid. The fool has a lot of wisdom and a lot of magic. And any tarot reader is going to tell you this. So when we see here the trickster, the vibe that I am getting is actually more about like not taking yourself so seriously. And this is something we see with wise fools across different mythologies and different cultures. So part of the wisdom is like you're gonna mess up and so is your the person you love and so is your family and so are your friends and so is your boss and la 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 so are the people you look up to it's just like everyone gonna screw up so that that doesn't mean that you just stay on this cliff forever until you're like now is perfection no one will screw up i will be perfect now i leap so this to me is like you're safe to make a leap it's, you're just not throwing all caution all common sense out of the window i i strongly get the energy they're like don't Take yourself too seriously, you know, like don't worry about it. Laugh at yourself. If you take this leap of faith, don't be too like, uh, like all encompassing. Like I took this one leap of faith. Is it good or is it bad? There could be good elements and there might be sticky elements like life, you know? So I get this kind of like, look, you're guided, you're protected, trust your intuition, trust your gut, right? It is time to go your own way. And I also get the sense that there's some like cheeky lessons in store for you that you will not learn if you do not take this calculated risk, this calculated leap of faith. And you want to learn. We want to learn because as we learn and we grow, we become more wise, we become more confident, we have more emotional depth, we have knowledge and wisdom. We want to grow. We don't really want to avoid the mistakes. The protection may be from perfection because if we won't move ahead until we are guaranteed every single spot is lined up, we ain't ever moving ahead. We're just going to stay stagnant, right? We don't want that. So I do get the sense that it is a good time for you to go ahead and just go for this cool thing you want to do, whether you want to like start that book or apply for that job or book that trip, like do it. But with like just mindfulness, calculated risks, right? If you really can't afford the trip, then maybe don't book it. Can you book something smaller? Can you create a savings account? Maybe now's the time. La, 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 right? But it's, uh, I'd say more than anything, it's just remembering to like laugh at yourself. If you go on the trip and not everything goes 100% according to plan, say la vie, you've got some good stories, you've learned some lessons, you survived some things, you're good to go. So that is your guidance. Go ahead, have some fun, laugh at yourself, be willing to learn, really see mistakes as teachers and allow yourself and others to do them so that we can all grow to become the best and most wonderful loving versions of ourselves. Okay, and if you picked the right hand pile, pile number three, then your messages are elephant, bearer of justice, which is justice in the tarot, and the om is the yew tree. Mmm, this is like really on the nose for the beginning of a year. So justice, and I really like this. Okay, so the numerology of justice, I love what they did in the Smith Rider Waite deck, which has put justice smack dab in the middle as number 11. There's lots of arguments to be made for its placement as number eight, but that's not what this video is about. So 11 is the halfway point in the major arcana. So I always see it as this doorway, as this veil, as this portal that you can choose to walk through or not. We always have free will, right? And so if you do walk through that portal, your world is going to get bigger, the experiences are going to get richer, and you are going to be expansive. You don't have to walk through that door though. That you decide whether or not you walk through that door by the decisions you make. So I always see if we don't decide to go through that door, then we know we're just going to keep repeating that first half of the major arcana or the version of that in your life. We're just going to keep repeating what we know. And if that's what you want, then that's what you do. But just know that you are consciously making the decision in justice. Justice is like, look, there's consequences to every action or inaction. And so, and that's not consequences like you're being punished, like bad llama. It's, it's just that for everything you do, there's an energetic ripple that's going to go out and everything you don't do. And then we have an energetic ripple, our thoughts, our actions, etc. So 
I really see it as a portal, and the yew tree really goes in alignment with this. So a yew is just fascinating. So they are poisonous, <laughs> so don't burn them or <laughs> be really mindful. Um, and they live an incredibly long time. And when the yew tree starts to die, they actually start to, like, regenerate. There's these little, I forget what they're called, they're, like, daughter trees, but it starts to basically rebirth itself. So the yew tree does have very much that energy of, like, what we are releasing in order to be reborn. So I do get the sense that you are being guided to close the chapter on those old cycles. Go through the portal, whatever that looks like for you. You know, and I know people, we don't want to get so hyped up. Well, do whatever you want, actually, at the beginning of the year. If you don't want to set intentions, if you want to set intentions, you just got to do you. But um, if you really vibe with that energy of like, you know, I like what I did last year, but I don't like some of those things. I just want to plan ahead for this year mindfully. This is a really great combination for that. Because it's just asking you what choices keep you in phase A of your life and what choices are going to move you towards phase B. What does what what would you like to be reborn? And then what do we need to let go of? So it's just like we only have so much space in our lives really like that's why you gotta let go of old stuff before we let in the new whether it's old stories about like I'm always this way or no one gets along with me or la 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 like it's okay to let those old stories go like open up a new chapter write a new page and that's really where you're at right now so justice is really more about just holding yourself accountable which really is a very empowering act because oftentimes blame is like they have the power they have the power they have the power they have the power i am just a little i have nothing <laughs> and this card is like yes you do yes you do so it's really choosing what are the conscious choices i'm making where do i want to stay and that's great if you're like no this is steady let's keep her steady let's make the choices that keep you steady but if there are things that you're like i really wanted to create this art i really want to go on this trip I really want this type of relationship then justice is like that's great what choices kept you in the past don't blame yourself either just understand consciously and then what choices are moving you towards this next stage this next journey with newness and richness and depth so decisions this week loving accountability and really looking forward to what you wish to birth in the year to come Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for listening to your readings. I hope they bring magic to you this week and help you weave a beautiful life into existence for yourself and for the collective. If you're looking for your own reading, I do have a website. You can go to my Etsy page, Mermaid Mystic Tarot on Etsy, and you can book a pre-recorded reading with me, or you can just like come to mommy and, <laughs> and then we can sit one-on-one -on -one and have a reading. Thank you again for being here and have a wonderful day.